self-love was really a, a foreign concept to me, a foreign experience. Um, I thought that I needed to do something to be worthy of love. I thought that I had to be a certain way or do things uh, in a certain way. And so um, one of my strategies before coming to Balanced View was uh, to um, lie to myself. <laughs> You're going to be delusional. You know, I'm fine. Everything's fine. I'm doing well. And, you know, I'm not sure what that other person, you know, how they were reacting about something. It wasn't anything about me. Um, but yet, the, you know, kind of an underlying sense of um, really, you know, wanting to be truly relational, truly connected with other people. And what I didn't realize was the, that this started at home. This started with myself. And um, I had had moments of experiencing this, you know, true love as, as, it, as it really is, as we are. We aren't anything other than true love. And so I had had, you know, momentary experiences, so I knew it was... I knew it was possible, but I thought I had to do something special. I thought I had to be really quiet, or I had to be really good, or I had to be really compassionate. And, you know, those weren't the things that I had practiced up in the past. And um, so when I came to Balance View and I heard just the simple phrase, short moments many times becomes continuous, this simultaneously and spontaneously, I wouldn't even say it informed all of my experience. It was all of my experience. It was myself as that experience. Now, it was really a felt sense in the moment, but I just knew that it was true. I knew it was the, the truth of how things work, how I was, and so I was very excited. And that made me want to even more so do whatever I could to um, help get this message out there, you know, to, to support uh, this training, this teaching, support Candace in, in, in whatever way I could, um, because that's all that really made any difference. Now, what I didn't realize at the, at the time was that this included everything. This included every thought, emotion, sensation, circumstance, uh, whatever idea I had about myself, whatever idea I had about anyone else or anything else, it included all of it. And that these things just came up as they did. You know, they, they just came into to, to seeing perception as they did. Now, I had a lot of really practiced ways of dealing with things however they were coming up they felt good, you know, I might be like really indulgent if they felt bad. I mean, basically what I would do is withdraw, resist, um, try to replace with something that felt better, that felt good and, and about anything, but, you know, just letting them be exactly that way. And so having the, the mainstays, and really taking that to heart and having these, you know, some, some really uncomfortable things arise. So I would want to take the mainstays to heart because, you know, who wouldn't, <laughs> you know, it, that it was, it was just, uh, um, it was uncomfortable. And so I relied on the root teacher. I relied on my trainer. I relied on, on groups like this. I relied on the trainings. I, you know, kind of did everything that I could. And in there some, somewhere, I understood that these things that I felt, 
that were, you know, really uncomfortable or, you know, that I didn't like very much. I had, you know, not a very good relationship. I had an avoidance relationship, you know, push those away. That, that they were an incredible training ground in, in recognizing all as open intelligence, recognizing myself as open intelligence. It was, it was slow, but sure. And it was incremental because I was so used to doing something else with these things. Running for the hills, you know, whatever, whatever it was. And one of the, one of the most uncomfortable things was how I felt about myself and how I thought I related with other people and um, how uncomfortable I felt or, or um, kind of flawed. I wasn't in the camp of like the fatally flawed until, (laughs) until I, um, relaxed a little bit more than I was. <laughs> so, um, and, but it was totally amazing to see that and to experience, you know, truly deeply that I could, I could relax for a short moment, a sec, a second at a time I could relax and just be open with whatever that was. And it was humbling. Uh, well, first of all, it was like scary. And then it was just plain uncomfortable. Then it was humbling and it just, it just grew in this um, something that I had never experienced before, which I actually identified one day as self-love and self-care you know, just this wide openness. And, you know, I still say like things that, oh, wish I wouldn't have said that. I don't do that as much anymore because I don't have that used to be my go-to solution. You know, just blurt it out or, or you know, just take it in, you know, the, the um, negative self-talk, whatever. And but you know just letting it be and now i don't even i don't even consider um trying to get away from it it's just not even there's no need and it's like it's not like i i don't need to get away from it because it will be over pretty soon anyway i just need to endure it there's it, it's really quite an amazing thing and it's really freed up uh time and energy and relating. Now, I still don't relate in the way that I think I should all the time. And, um, you know, sometimes it's like, well, you know, that's just my personality. That's just the way I am. And it's, it's not so much like that anymore as just like, there's no need to do anything about it no need to try to change and be like that person. Oh, I really like the way they act, you know, or, uh, oh, I wish I could be, you know, whatever. It's just really relaxing. And in that, I found that, you know, I just have an ability to be with myself and other people much more easily than ever before. And Not even that it's really an issue because what time and energy was taken up, you know, trying to do something about things is is now free and open. And, you know, just find just natural responsiveness and actions taken and and um, a lot more alone time than I ever had before. But, you know, really productive alone alone time that's really benefiting others. You know, I found that I don't have to, you know, be uh, talking all the time where, I, you know, used to do, you know, a lot of relating just so I could feel good. But um, it's, it's a wonderful life. 
speaking of Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It's, it really is great. And, and even with whatever is happening, you know, there's no longer the blame either of myself or of other people or of situations. It's just open. Sometimes it feels great and sometimes it doesn't, but that's not the motivating factor any longer. You know, and, and you know, and in this, um, Gift strengths and talents have have really opened up for the benefit of all that you know used to just be for the benefit of me, and I didn't even know they existed anyway. So, you know, it was kind of a moot point. So the um, now let me see if we answered if I. Oh yeah. So then the repetition. You know, the repetition is just a. It's an incredible incredible gift really you know that we're that we can uh, practice short moments over and over and over again just like we've practiced all the other stuff over and over and over again and to to know that we practice that other stuff for decades and we practice short moments for a couple of years and just to see the complete efficacy that with the, the other three mainstays is, is just amazing. And you know, just whatever it is that has us practice another short moment, take another short moment of openness, of ease, of relaxation, it's a complete gift. And not only to ourselves, but to everyone, to everyone. And it just, it just naturally shows up that way in our lives. And in terms of, I mean, it is like so easy in, in rooms and, and on calls like this to be together when we're all speaking the, the same language. And, um, and we, we have the same experience. We know what this is. But we know this for everybody. We know this for everybody. And, and you know, we, we um, yeah, I, I just find that however I relate in this room, I relate the, the same way everywhere because that's all there is. That is the, the relational uh, uh, progress and um, effectiveness of, of uh, balanced view and the mainstays in, in terms of social change. I've seen social change all around in rooms like this and in, you know, all aspects of life, work, you know, just people at the store, all over. It can't be any other way than that. 